good evening to all uh, today we are going to discuss about second volume physics the last session we discussed the first volume uh, what are the important questions in two marks three marks and five marks and how to answer the questions as per key today we are going to discuss about the second lesson second volume as you know that the second volume the sixth lesson is array optics and the seventh lesson is so we are discussing about this uh, brewster's law then brewster's law the diagram is a must the diagram carries one mark and other expressions on the ip plus 90 plus rp is equal to 180 degree and rp is nothing but 90 minus ip and n is equal to sin ip by sin rp uh, for rp you can write 90 minus ip sin of 90 minus theta is cos theta so you can get the final expression n is equal to tan ip the refractive index is uh, equal to the tangent of the polarizing angle that you can write actually this uh, first optics means uh, actually i mixed both ray optics as well as wave optics both the topics will come in one display itself and then what are the uses of polarites this is a very very important two mark or three marks question suppose if it is asked in three marks means you write six points if it is asked in two marks means you just write four points polarites are used to avoid glare polarites are used in holography polarites are used in lcd if you don't know liquid crystal display you write lcd light emitting diode is led and lcd is liquid crystal diode polarites are used to improve color contrast in oil painting oil painting is the main point old oil painting polarites are used as window glasses to control the intensity of incoming light polarized laser beam access in needle to read write in cd it is used to write cd that's all read and write cd then this critical angle this we already discussed that sine ic is 1 by n it means that the critical angle is a reciprocal of the refractive index from this ic is equal to sine inverse of 1 by n we can write so now let us go to the second one next slide We were discussing about uh, this Young's double slit experiment. Uh, we are finding the path difference. So in order to find the path difference, you should understand this diagram. Actually, this is the path difference. This is nothing but your uh, S2M. So this S2M, we have to find out. This is expressed as delta. So delta by D is equal to Y by D where delta is the path difference, small d is the, the distance between the two slits and capital D is the distance between the screen and the slit and y is the, from the center, the distance of the fringe. Yeah, sometimes it may be a bright fringe or a dark fringe. So the condition for bright fringe as well as dark fringe. This path difference should be equal to integral multiples of lambda, n lambda. Here the path difference should be equal to 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. So from this you can express the value of the y value. y value is the distance of the bright fringe or dark fringe from the center. This distance you can find. This above formula gives the distance of the nth bright fringe as well as nth dark fringe. So distance between any two consecutive bright or dark fringe is expressed as beta. This beta is called fringe width or bandwidth. We can write fringe width or bandwidth. So beta equal to lambda d by d. The next one is describe the Vesuvius method to determine the speed of light. So you have to write the explanation, then working, and you have to draw the diagram also, the expressions for speed of light. And theta is the angle of one teeth or one cut at the center of the wheel as this wheel carries a 360 degree so it is written as 2 pi as there are n number of teeth and the n number of cuts n theta plus n theta is 2 n theta 
is equal to 2 pi. So theta equal to pi by n. Here we are writing the formula for speed of light. Speed is given by distance traveled by that time. It means that the distance traveled is 2D and the time is expressed as, as you know that omega is equal to theta by t and t is equal to theta by omega. For theta, we are writing pi by n. So 2D by pi by n omega, this term goes to the numerator. 2d n omega by pi. So the value of uh, was found to be 2.9972 into 10 power 8. This is your value. And the uh, theoretical value, you know that 3 into 10 power 8 ms power minus 1. It is very, very close to the theoretical value. So this value is accepted. Coming to our next one. This is also an important five mark question. Sometimes it may be asked in three marks also derive the mirror equation and the equation for the lateral magnification. So we are considering this AB is the object. So we are getting the image A dash B dash. So we are considering four triangles, four tri similar triangles. One triangle is A dash B dash P. This, this is a small triangle, A dash, B dash, P, this triangle. And another triangle, A, B, P, another triangle. So we are considering the corresponding sides. The corresponding sides are proportional. So A dash, B dash by A, B is equal to P, A dash by P, A. This is one expression. And coming to the next similar triangles, this is A dash, B dash by F. This is very, very small triangle. And another triangle, assume this is a straight line, this is uh, somewhat curved, but it is uh, it's, uh, considered as a straight line. So this is DPF or PDF. These two triangles are similar triangles. So by comparing the corresponding sides, you will be getting the equation like this, PA dash by PA is equal to PA dash minus PF by pf what is this pa dash pa dash is the distance between the pole and the image which is nothing but your v and this pa dash is the distance between the object and the pole which is u so substituting all these values you will be getting the equation like this minus v by minus u both are in the left hand side so minus V by minus U, all the values are taken as minus. The reason is because we are measuring from the left side. If it is right side means as per the Cartesian equation, it will become plus. Here it is all are minus value. So you see all are minus value, minus U, minus V, minus F. So you substituting all the values after simplification, you will be getting an expression like this one by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v. This is a 5 mark question, not 3 mark question, very, very important 5 mark question. The next one is uh, lens makers formula. How we are making a convex lens by using n1, n2. n1 is the refractive index of the R medium and n2 is the refractive index of the glass and R1 is the radius of the curvature of this, this surface. And R2 is the radius of curvature of the second surface. And U and V are the object and image distance. We are going to write the equation, mirror equation for the two cases. N2 by V dash minus N1 by U is equal to N2 minus N1 by R1. This is for the first phase. For the second phase, it is N1 by V minus N2 by V dash is equal to N1 minus N2. So this can be modified as in, as first equation. Instead of N1 minus N2, you take one minus sign outside. It is N2 minus N1 by minus R2. Adding the two equation, this N2 by V dash and N2 by V dash gets cancelled. Uh, minus N1 by U plus N1 by V is equal to N2 minus N1 R1 plus N2 minus N1 R2. Take N2 minus N1 outside. So within bracket, you will get 1 by R1 by minus 1 by R2. This is your RHS. 
in lhs you will get uh, in the numerator you have n1 take n1 outside it is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to n2 minus n1 by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 suppose if you assume the object is at infinity distance so u becomes infinity and uh, the focal length becomes v v becomes f so you substitute the values take this n1 to the denominator n2 minus n1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 1 by v v becomes f and u becomes infinity so 1 by f is equal to n2 minus n1 by n1 by n1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 assuming this condition for air the refractive index is 1 and the medium the refractive index is index is n2 is n so finally you will get the equation 1 by f is equal to n minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this equation is called lens makers formula because it tells the lens manufacturers what curvature is needed to make a lens of desired focal length so in order to make a desired focal length what are the curvatures the radius of curvature of the two sides so using this formula they can construct a desired lens of desired focal length coming to the next one now we are going to discuss about our seventh lesson so whatever questions we discussed these are all some important questions we discussed a two marks three marks as well as five marks kindly and note it down and prepare well for the exam so this is dual nature of light after finishing this i will show some more slides some more live slides uh, if you see that slide it will be more effective for you you can understand very very easily what is this defined work function of a metal give its unit what is photoelectric effect what is photoelectric effect so when light falls on some photoelectric material electrons are emitted these electrons are moves from if a voltage is supplied if electrons uh, travels and this movement of electron constitute a current this is called photoelectric current so photoelectric current is due to photons the current due to the photon light is called photoelectric current how will you define the threshold frequency minimum frequency above which photoelectrons are emitted is called threshold frequency and what is a photocell mention the different types of photocells there are three types of photocells photo emissive cell photovoltaic cell photoconductive cells coming to the state de broglie hypothesis waves are associated with moving elementary particles like electrons protons and neutrons this is your de broglie hypothesis a proton and an electron have some same kinetic energy which one has greater de broglie wavelength the de broglie wavelength formula is lambda is equal to h by 2m k the kinetic energy is same so if you divide at the lambda 1 by lambda 2 all constant all uh, things will becomes cancelled you will get m a by m e so whichever is having greater mass will travel a proton kinetic energy which one has greater wavelength whichever is having lesser mass will have the greater de broglie wavelength so lambda e by lambda a is m a by m e so mass of the electron is lesser than the mass of the alpha particle so electron has greater de broglie wavelength the mass of the electron is very less when compared to the mass of the uh, alpha particle so this electron has greater de broglie wavelength what are the applications of x-rays this is a, a two mark or three mark question x-rays are used to detect uh, fractures x-rays are used to cure skin diseases and tumors 
X-rays are used to check flaws in welded joints. X-ray diffraction is used to structure of atom. These are all the some of the important question and the differentiate continuous and the characteristic extra radiation of you can see all possible wavelength in continuous X-ray spectra. You can see all possible wavelength, but in characteristic X-ray spectra, you have only particular wavelength, well-defined wavelength when the target is hit by fast electrons. The wavelength depends upon the voltage. The wavelength independent depends on the characteristics of the car target. Wavelength depends upon the voltage. Here it depends upon the target material. Depends upon the target material. These are all the some of the two more questions and as well as three more questions. List the L out the loss of photoelectric effect. This is a important three mark question. Sometimes it may be asked in five mark also. Minimum frequency above which photoelectrons are emitted is called threshold frequency. Instantaneous, it is a instantaneous process. There is no time gap between the incident of light and the ejection of photoelectrons. Number of photoelectrons and saturation current emitted is directly proportional to the intensity of incident light. The photoelectrons emitted is uh, directly proportional to the intensity of incident light. Maximum kinetic, uh, kinetic energy of the electron is directly proportional to the frequency. It is independent of the intensity. The kinetic energy depends what? only on the frequency, not the intensity. But number of photoelectrons emitted depends on the intensity. What are the uses of photoelectric cells? All automatic devices, automatic alarms, street lights, sound produced, reproduced in motion pictures, athlete speeds in uh, measured using photo cells. Light intensity can be measured using photo cell. Street lights are automatically turned on when it gets dark using photo cells. These are all the some of the uses of photo cells. Then derive the expression for de Broglie wavelength. There are two questions. Don't confuse the two questions. One is de Broglie wavelength and another one is de Broglie wavelength of electron. This de Broglie wavelength means it is something related to momentum. As P is equal to H in nu by C. P is equal to MB, you know. Here we are writing P is equal to H in nu by C. So this H nu by C is nothing but your H nu. The C is nothing but your frequency into wavelength. So C becomes nu into lambda. Nu nu gets cancelled. H by lambda or lambda is equal to H by P. Where P is the linear momentum. So lambda is equal to H by MB, like H by P. For a particle of mass M traveling with a speed B, the wavelength lambda is given by H by MB or H by P. This H is the Planck's constant. The another question is derive an expression for de Broglie wavelength of electron. So it is the same question. What we are going to do is, so take this the lambda is equal to H by MB. This H is the Planck's constant and M is the mass and the mass of the electron. V is the velocity. So this velocity is replaced by this expression. An electron of mass M accelerated through a potential difference. Kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is of mv square. This is uh, this kinetic energy is given by E into V. This capital V is the potential and E is the charge of the electron. So from this V square equal to 2 e, V E by M or V is equal to taking square root root of 2 V E by M. Substitute for this value lambda is equal to H by M. For V, you can write root of 2 V V by M. So after simplification, uh, this will become H by root of 2 M K. And substituting this value, H is a constant. This is 2 M V. 2 is a constant. Uh, M is mass and V is the uh, charge of the electron. Substituting all this Planck's constant value except this capital B, this will become 12.27 Armstrong by root B. So 
the de broglie wavelength of electron depends only on the voltage applied so root v so lambda is equal to 12.27 armstrong by 2p so write the characteristics of photon what are the characteristics of photon it carries no charge the energy of the photon is given by e is equal to h nu photons travel with the velocity of light speed of light photons are electrically neutral photons are if it is electrically neutral means they are not affected by electric and magnetic field when a photon interacts with matter the total energy total linear momentum angular momentum are conserved the energy of the photon is determined by the frequency as you know that e is equal to h nu the energy of the photon depends only on the frequency not the intensity it depends only on the frequency not the intensity one more question there are the einstein photoelectric equation this is a very very important question this is a five mark question most expected five mark question and uh, see this diagram when a photon of uh, frequency high energy h nu whose frequency is nu incident on a metal surface so this uh, energy is observed by the metal surface in this a part of the energy is used to knock out the electrons and the remaining part is remaining energy is given as kinetic energy to the electron so that the electron gain this kinetic energy and it travels so the energy of the photon is given by photoelectric work function so this energy required to knock out the electron is called work function photoelectric work function and the remaining energy is taken as kinetic energy so with this energy the electron move so that this is the total energy e is equal to h nu h nu is divided into two parts one is work function the work function is divided denoted by phi 0 plus half m b square so this phi 0 is replaced by h nu 0 where h is the planck's constant and nu 0 is the threshold frequency so h nu is equal to h nu 0 plus half m b square so this h nu we take this h nu 0 on the other side h nu minus h nu 0 is equal to kinetic energy maximum so this is the condition for maximum kinetic energy so kinetic energy maximum is equal to h nu is the total energy and phi 0 is the work function so total energy minus work function is the kinetic energy maximum construction and working of a photo msu cells two metallic electrode consist of cathode and anode light falls on the cathode so as we discussed in the photoelectric effect electrons are emitted a voltage is applied between cathode and anode so this anode attracts the electron so due to the flow of electron there is a current in the galvanometer so this is your photoelectric cells the explanation is given here that you can write you have to draw the diagram also then electron microscope the electron microscope principle diagram and principle carries one mark or one and a half marks it is based on the principle of wave nature of electron working main point is electrostatic magnetic lens are used this is an important point electrostatic or magnetic lens are used for focusing the electron beam other points you can write as it is in the notes you can write or in the text also then another question is uh, davison and uh, germa german experiment this is an sometimes they may ask this question but it is a very simple question but uh, sometimes if you see the diagram uh, you may get confused actually electrons is falling on a crystal this crystal nickel uh, nickel crystal this crystal is rotated so you are measuring the angle and you are also finding the intensity of the electron which is scattered intensity of the electron which is scattered so you are drawing a graph between the angle and the intensity so you can see 
okay. you can see the intensity is maximum at a particular voltage and and intensity is maximum at a particular angle at an accelerating voltage of 54 volt the intensity is maximum with an angle 50 degree so due to this constructive interference of diffracted electrons intensity is maximum so the formula is lambda by we know that lambda is equal to 12.27 by root b what is the voltage we are using the maximum voltage is 54 volt if you take square root for 54 it is around 7 point something so 12.27 by 7 point something you get 1.67 so the wavelength of the electron is 1.67 armstrong same result for wavelength of electron we have confirmed wave nature of electrons for wave nature of electron this is the value also obtained 1.67 armstrong so this is your uh, davison German experiment. Let us go to our uh, next lesson, atomic physics. In atomic physics, uh, write the properties of cathode rays. Cathode ray means they carry negative charges. Whenever they carry charges, they are uh, affected by electric and magnetic field. They travel in a straight line. They have momentum and energy they when they fall on material heat is produced they affect photographic plate also they ionize the gas through which they pass they travel with this one tenth of the speed of light their speed is one tenth of the speed of light this is only three more question then coming to the five more question jj thompson method to find the e by m value you can write the construction like this and we are applying two for field one is electric field as well as magnetic field we are adjusting the two fields when the two fields are equal e is the force due to the electric field and bev is the force to due to the magnetic field this is lorentz force this is your electrostatic force e into capital e where e is the charge of the electron capital E is the electric field intensity here B is the magnetic field E is the charge of the electron V is the velocity so when the two fields are equal the cathode rays travels straight away it is not deflected by electric field as well as magnetic field using this we can find the value of V V is equal to E by B where E is the electric field intensity and B is the magnetic field so we are going to find the E by M value. We know that the value of uh, EM, kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy. The kinetic energy gained by the electron when it reaches the anode is equal to potential energy acquired by the cathode. So the cathode acquired a potential energy E into V, where this is nothing but your W into VQ. In first lesson, you might have studied the work done is given by uh, voltage into potential voltage into charge voltage is v and the charge is q here the charge of the electron is taken as e so e into v w is equal to vk the same formula we are applying so e into v is equal to half mv square you find e by m e by m is equal to v square by 2v this v is speed velocity this capital v is your potential so substitute for your V, v value small v is nothing but e by b so this v square becomes e square by b square so e square by 2 v b square where e is the electric field intensity and v is the potential b is the magnetic field so substituting all this value the e by m value e by m means uh, the ratio of charge to the mass of the electron e by specific charge this is also called specific charge specific charge is given by 1.7 into 10 power 11 coulomb per kg so you can find this value using this experiment this is somewhat uh, what i can say this uh, minicon oil drop method is somewhat vague uh, and question uh, you could uh, most probably we may not expect this question so we may skip this one also 
coming to our next part what is mean by distance of closest approach the minimum distance between the center of the nucleus and the alpha particle just before it gets reflected back through 180 degree uh, you know that alpha particle is nothing but a positive charge it carries a, a 2 he4 helium so when an alpha particle and uh, enter near a uh, atom uh, some of the alpha particles are uh, goes without any deviation some of the alpha particles are slightly deviated and some uh, some of the alpha particle which is uh, nearing the nucleus it is just retraces its path reflected back in the same path at an angle of 180 degree so this minimum distance we call it as the distance of closest approach the impact parameter is defined as the perpendicular distance between the center of the gold nucleus and the direction of velocity vector of alpha particle when it is at a large distance as we discussed in the distance cause of close approach you apply the condition you will get the diff, uh, impact parameter so what are the drawbacks of rutherford atel model it fails to explain the distribution of electrons it fails to explain the stability of atom according to this model the spectra should be continuous but actually the spectra here we are finding only line spectra but this model shows it is a continuous spectra then what are the postulates of bohr atom model this is an important question the coulomb force provides the centripetal force necessary for revolution suppose the as you know that the nucleus is at the center which has both proton as well as a neutron Uh, but the electrons are revolving around the circular path but this electron should be attracted towards the nucleus and uh, it has to fall in the nucleus but it is not falling in the nucleus it is uh, revolving in the circular path the reason is because of the centripetal force so the coulomb's law is uh, balanced by centripetal force so coulomb's uh, force provides the centripetal force for necessary revolution and the electrons revolves in the orbit uh, the angular momentum of the electron is given by nh by 2 pi the angular momentum of the electron is given by n is the orbit first orbit second orbit h is the planck's constant and 2 pi pi you know it's a constant the next one is the electron may jump from one of the orbit to another orbit by absorbing m or emitting a photon whose energy is equal to the difference in energy between two orbits delta e is equal to ef minus ei suppose an electron jump from higher orbit to lower orbit it gives out light photon which is given by delta e is equal to ef by ef minus ef is the final energy ea is the initial energy. this difference is in energy is emitted as photon suppose if an electron absorbs energy so it travels from it jumps from lower orbit to higher orbit this is the two cases when electron when electrons absorb energy it jumps from lower orbit to higher orbit when it emits energy when it jumps from higher orbit to lower orbit it gives out energy in the form of photon there have an expression for the orbital radius or velocity of electron using bohr's atom model here we are considering two forces one is coulomb force another one is centripetal force equate the two forces you will get the expression for the radius of the nth orbit rn is the radius of the nth orbit and then taking this uh, second postulates according to bohr atom model the um, uh, <laughs> angular momentum angular momentum is uh, moment of the linear momentum mvn rn is equal to nh by 2 pi so from this we express the value of rn so substitute this value you will get rn is equal to a n square and a0 a0 is the is called the bohr radius then mvn rn is equal to mvn a0 n square is nh by 2 pi so after simplification you will get this value this is the derivation you can work it out then the velocity is given by the velocity of the electron is inversely proportional to the n 
the quantum number n, that first orbit, second orbit, and the third orbit. It is inversely proportional. Then coming to the energy of the electrons. What is the total energy of the electron? This is your potential energy. This is your kinetic energy. Both are in the same form. You have Z square, M e power 4, epsilon naught square, H square, N square. Here also you have Z square, M e power 4, epsilon naught square, H square, N square. The only difference is here you have minus 1 by 4. Here you have minus 1 by 8. If you add these two values and so after simplification, all are constant. M is the mass and E is the charge. Z is the atomic number. Epsilon naught is the permittivity. H is the Planck's constant. After substituting all the values, you will get the N square. N is alone a variable. So minus 13.6 N square electron volt. This is the energy of the electron in the nth orbit. Suppose if you want to find in the first orbit, so substitute n is equal to 1. So minus 13.6 by 1 electron volt, n is equal to 2, minus 13.6 by 4. So energy slightly, it always increases as you go from lower orbit to higher orbit. Another important question is, explain the spectral series, Lyman series, Balmer series, Passion series, <coughs> bracket series and fund series. First you write the standard expression. This one by lambda is equal to R into R is a Rydberg constant, one by N square minus one by M square. This one by lambda is called wave number. The reciprocal of wavelength is called wave number. The unit for wavelength is meter m power minus 1. Suppose if you take a Lyman series. So what happened to Lyman series? An electron jumps from m value 2, 3. An electron may jump from second to first, second orbit to first orbit, third orbit to first and fourth orbit to first orbit. So all the electron comes to the first orbit. So this is your Lyman series. So this new prime is equal to R into for N, you substitute one square for M, you can substitute two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. So then coming to Balmer series, an electron may jumps from third, fourth, fifth to second orbit. All the electron comes to only second orbit. Then it becomes a Balmer series. So new prime, prime is equal to R by one by two square and M value is three, four, five. Similarly, passion electron jumps from any other orbit other than third orbit, fourth to third, fifth to third, and sixth to third. Like this, you can write. So you can write the formula for all the phi series, bracket series. It comes to fourth orbit, phi to four, six to four, and seven to four. Similarly, fund series, it is fifth orbit from six to five or seven to five and eight to five. So you will get the final expression. So this is an important five mark question, different series. Then coming to our uh, next lesson, nuclear physics. Some, uh, some important question you might have studied in chemistry also, what are isotopes, what are isobars, what are isotones, depending upon the atomic number and mass number, you have to give the answer. What is mass defect? The difference between the total mass of the nucleon and the actual mass of the nucleus. This is called your mass de defect. Define binding energy. So the binding energy is in the formation of nucleus, the mass that it disappeared, it converted into an equivalent amount of energy is called binding energy. So when in the nucleus, when it uh, in the nuclear, when in order to form the nucleus, some mass is disappearing. So the amount of mass that is disappearing is converted into energy that is called binding energy. The expression for binding energy is delta m c square, where delta m is the mass defect and c square is the speed of light, delta m c square. B is delta m c square. This is your expression for binding energy. Then, Radioactivity, give the symbolic representation of alpha decay, beta decay. These are all some important questions. 
what is mean by activity the number of nuclei decayed per second is called activity it unit is becquerel and define curie one curie is 3.7 dk per second 10 power 10 dk per second dk per second and becquerel are same dk per second is nothing but becquerel these are all some two marks three mark important question explain the variation of average binding energy with mass mass number uh, by graph and discuss the future so there is one graph the binding energy per nucleon if the binding energy reaches the maximum value of 8.8 .8 million electron volt for ion it is uh, the binding energy is maximum the ion is more stable than other elements between uh, a 42 that is the ma mass number 40 to 120 average binding energy is about 8.5 million electron volt 8.5 mev for higher so for uh, if the Mass, if the atomic number is above 92, the element becomes most unstable and they become radioactive. Today you will consider uranium, all thorium and some other elements, they are uh, most unstable and they be, uh, exhibit the nature of radioactivity. You can see their uh, atomic number is above 92. So if the atomic number is above 92, so they, uh, it becomes most unstable. When heavier nucleus splits into lighter nucleate and release energy known as fission, it is the principle of atom bomb. Explain the nuclear forces. This is very, very important question. It is attractive force which holds the nucleus together inside the nucleus. It is always a attractive force. So what are the properties? It is a short range force. It is the strongest force. We have many types of forces, electrostatic force, gravitational force, and many other forces, but the nuclear force is the strongest force. It is attractive force. It is independent of the charge. There is a force between proton and proton, neutron and neutron, and proton and neutron pair. So it does not depend upon the charge. It does not act an electron, hence it does not alter the chemical properties of the atom. Okay. Then explain the law of radioactivity dn by dt the rate of disintegration is directly proportional to the number of atoms dn by dt is directly proportional to n this proportional design is removed by introducing a constant is equal to minus lambda n what is this minus lambda minus indicates as time increases the number of atoms decreases so arranging this equation dn by n is equal to minus lambda into t integrating uh, for if in order to integrate, you must have the limits. The lower limit is n naught and the upper limit is n. Initially, you have n naught number of atoms. Finally, it is n number of atoms. So integrate dn by n. It becomes log n by n naught is equal to minus lambda t. So this can be written as by taking log on both sides it becomes n by n naught is equal to e power minus lambda t. Take n naught to the other side, it will become n is equal to n naught e power lambda t. This is about your radioactive law. And another one is very, very important question. Uh, describe the working of a nuclear reactor with the block diagram. Uh, it is a device which, uh, in which a nuclear fission takes place in controlled manner. Here, the nuclear fission takes place only in controlled manner. So, what are the materials used for fuel? What are the fuel material, fission material? Enriched uranium-238-92 with 2 to 4 percent of uranium-235-92. And the next one is moderator. What is the role of the moderator? Converse fast neutron into slow neutrons. So what are the we are using? What are the chemicals you are using? Heavy water, water, and graphite. Role. What is control rods? Control the neutron rate. Then what are the examples? Cadmium rod and boron rods are used. Then shielding. We are uh, shielding the entire device to affect the harmful radiation, not to protect from the harmful radiation. Protection against harmful radiation. <laughs> Concrete wall of about 2 to 2.5 meter height is made. 
then cooling system we a large amount of heat energy is released so in order to remove the heat energy we are using this cooling system it is water and heavy water and liquid sodium we are using to control the cooling system carries the heat to steam generator the steam runs the turbines which produces electricity so this cooling system carries the heat to steam generator this heat is tra transferred to steam generator the steam runs turbines turbines which produces electricity from this we are getting electricity also then coming to our uh, next uh, one semiconductor physics the semiconductor physics uh, uh, there are some important questions important five mark questions half way rectifier full way rectifier this is your half way rectifier what is the rectifier rectifier is a device which convert ac into dc an alternating current is converted into a direct current so this is a step down transformer the step down transformer ac input is applied we are getting uh, the same ac it is connected to a diode so when the diode is forward biased during forward bias during the half of the cycle of ac input the diode is forward bias so the current flows in the circuit when the current flows in a resistor we will get a voltage so only during the positive half of the cycle forward by the diode is forward biased so there is a current in addition to this we have voltage also by you can see this this is a alternating current and alternating voltage alternating emf so during the past half of the cycle we are getting the output this is your negative of negative of there is no output there is a gap similarly during the past half we are getting the output so forward biasing means a positive is connected to p type semiconductor positive potential is connected to p type semiconductor and diode and negative is connected to n type n n junction of the diode coming to the the efficiency is only 40.6 because only uh, one portion one half of the ac is uh, rectified other half is not rectified the efficiency is only 40.6 percent explain the construction and the working of a full wave rectifier this is a full wave rectifier now you can see two diodes the first diodes conduct when it is forward biased when it is forward biased this diode gets reverse biased okay when the first diode reverse biased second diode gets forward biased so you are getting the output for the entire cycle this is for the first off this is for the second off so for the during the first off the d1 is forward biased during the second off d2 is forward biased so you are getting the output for the full cycle so there is no break in voltage so you are getting the direct voltage as well as direct current as shown in the graph so thus you can explain the and during this uh, positive off and negative off how the current goes that you can explain here the efficiency is uh, very high so we are using this this type of rectifiers this is an important question rectifier then in logic gates we have only one the state and pro de morgan's law this is an important question this you have in your practical also you have this the complement of the sum of the input is equal to the product of its complement a plus b whole bar is equal to a bar dot b bar a plus b whole bar is equal to a bar dot b bar this you might have studied in lower classes in mathematics also a union b o dash is equal to a dash intersection b dash the same thing here we are taking the complement negation a plus b whole bar is equal to a bar dot b bar this a plus b whole bar a plus b is a or gate when it is connected to a not gate it becomes a nor gate so this is nor gate so you can uh, draw the truth table this truth table uh, for a plus b whole bar the output is 1000 a bar dot b bar also the output is 100 so both are same 
coming to your uh, second de morgan theorem it is just instead of plus you are writing dot instead of dot you are writing plus so complement of the product of the two input is equal to the sum of the complements what is this a dot b a dot b is an and gate when it is given to a not gate it is a nand gate so nand this is nand gate this is your nor gate so a bar plus b bar so a b a dot b 0 0 0 then a dot b whole bar is 1 1 1 1 0 similarly a bar plus b bar is 1 1 1 1 0 so both are same a dot b whole bar is equal to a bar plus b bar this is in your practical also you are going to do the practical this is one of the experiment in your practical so these are all some important questions this transistor and all somewhat uh, which is uh, somewhat very much confusing so it is uh, better to skip uh, transistor and then our last lesson is uh, recent developments distinguish between nano science and the nano technology what is the difference between nano material and bulk material the particle size we have to we are going to define the particle size bulk material means particle size is uh, very very great is in the order of 10 100 million nanometer it is the particle size is less than 10 100 nanometer it is called nano nano means 10 power minus 9 so give any two examples of nano in nature single strand dna a dna molecule is an example for na nano particle and uh, morpho butterfly feather of the peacock lotus leaf are example for this nano particle mention any two advantages of robotics there are many advantages you can write two advantages it is cheaper you can work for 24 into 7 you can work the entire week entire month also it is error free also this is very much important error free stronger and faster so you, if you can prepare for three or four points you can write at least two points so what are the disadvantages the disadvantage is uh, unemployment will increase if you employ if you use many robots robotics uh, will get unemployment problem and then another one is cannot handle an unexpected situation if a small thing goes wrong it ends up with a big loss suppose uh, if a minor mistake is done means it will lead to a big loss in the company and identification and rectification of problem takes more time identifying and rectifying problem is takes more time so these are all the some of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, robotics the application of nanomaterials in various fields it is used in many fields automatic uh, automotive industries catalyst tires sensors uh, wind screen and car bodies and uh, painting it requires painting and other and chemical industries there are many fields engineering electronic industries constructions medicine textile energy so you can mention all the fields Sometimes you may expect a five mark question from this. Sometimes you may expect, and we cannot, uh, it is not sure. Sometimes we can ex expect a five mark question. This is about your 10th uh, lesson. And uh, coming to the, and one more thing we wanted to discuss uh, regarding practicals. I wanted to discuss, you have only five practicals. One is, um, <laughs> Comparison of EMF using potentiometer, then tangent galvanometer, and another one is PN junction diode, only forward biasing, not reverse biasing, three experiment. You have six, not five, six experiment you have. Then uh, fourth one is uh, logic gates. Logic gates, uh, uh, AND gate, NAND gate, XR gate, NOT gate. And another one is R gate, nor gate uh, xr gate not gate the last one is 
de morgan's theorem to prove the de morgan's theorem so this practical is a very very important one the practical starts uh, next week 25th of this april so try to attend the practicals uh, whatever uh, the, your uh, subject teacher says try to understand and try to follow it uh, don't think you will get good uh, full mark in practicals uh, suppose if you are failed in practicals it is not possible to pass very easily or the running a practical of fail acting now pass under the room from a customer theory of 15 market the pass panilla and a total learning out of 100 K you have to take 35 marks suppose if you have scored 15 marks in theory in the practical plus internal assessment say the ninga palanji mark the one in the car 15 plus 15 total of 30 marks tower on so you will get failed in the exam so practical like on the serious side of the panoning a practical the fail at an ingamar be passed under the end of the it is not at all possible so try to do the practical and we are also um, we have i think we have discussed all the chapters if you have any doubt means you can ask you can chat with us and you can ask for the doubt also mm. some of the pdfs files you can see so this is about our total internal reflection you see a ray of light it travels from denser medium to rarer medium this is one angle of incidence this is another angle of incidence if the ray you see this ray this ray travels and it just reflected back it is not refracted it is just reflected back here the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle so this i is greater than i c then this will occur this uh, instead of refraction you will get reflection will occur this is about your uh, critical angle the critical angle is related i already told you sin ic is equal to lambda g by lambda n this is your lens makers formula this we have already discussed actually but here they are using different notations they see this diagram this is one surface first surface whose radius of curvature is r1 this is second surface radius of curvature is r2 for the first surface you are getting the image here and this image act as object for the second surface and you will get the final image like this so you can uh, arrive the final expression this is ring's double slit experiment uh, s1 and s2 are the two coherent sources um, they are separated by a small distance d this is the screen the distance between the slits and the screen is uh, capital D. So we are considering a point here P where we have a bright fringe, which is at a distance of Y. Now we can see this uh, dark and bright fringes. You can see all are having same beta value band with the same. This is a dark fringe. This is a bright fringe. All are having same uh, band with value. Beta is common here, same here the condition for bright fringe for it is n lambda this is 2n plus lambda by 2 or 2n 1 minus 1 lambda by 2 you can use any method this is for constructive interference this is for destructive interference another important difference between interference and diffraction sometimes it may be asked in three marks also it is the superposition of two different wave strains of coherent sources it is wave front it is not uh, coherent sources here it is wave front fringe width is generally constant here fringe width is not constant all the maxima have the same intensity all are having the same intensity 
uh, here the maxima are varying intensity the intensity is not same there is a good contrast between maximum and minima there is a poor contrast between maxima and minima This is about our photoelectric effect. This we have seen already. The properties of photons and all we have seen already. Then the loss of photoelectric uh, for a given substance, uh, threshold frequency and all. Then this is your uh, photoelectric equation. This we already discussed. H nu is equal to phi zero plus half mb square. And this is your work function. This is your kinetic energy. So you can see the photon. Uh, of energy H nu is falling on a metal. It is a photosensitive metal. This H nu zero is used to excite the electron, knock out the electron, and the remaining energy is used as kinetic energy. So the total energy is divided into two parts. One is the work function, and another one is the kinetic energy. So if you see this diagram, you can easily understand this. Then our Davison and the German experiment for this angle of uh, different angles, you have a deductor for the angle of uh, 40, 54 degree, you have the wavelength lambda is equal to 1.65 Armstrong. This is your radioactivity. So dn by dt, this uh, we already discussed n by n naught is equal to e power minus lambda t. So n is equal to n naught e power minus lambda t. So this graph shows that the number of atoms decreases exponentially. You see, it decreases exponentially. So it takes infinity time to become zero. So when will you get the zero number of atoms that you cannot say it takes infinite time. So this, if we extend this one, it is a parallel to x-axis. So infinite time is required to complete all the atoms to disappear. This is your uh, the rectifier you can see. This is a half-wave rectifier. So this is a positive off, this is negative off. So this positive off and negative off means you are getting the output only for the positive off for the negative off there is no output so this is your ac this is your dc this is a half wave rectifier then coming to the full wave rectifier this is your positive off you have the output for the positive off during negative off also you have the output so this is a alternating voltage you have the output for the full cycle This is not needed. This is not in your syllabus. So with this, I'm just...